what's up tonight in Taida? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Taida Evening Talk Show. I'm Joan. And I'm Peggy. Wow. So it's Wednesday night again tonight. So before we start off our discussion tonight, let's listen to a piece of music. And guess what we are having tonight? you who might think is about LGBT, that's right. What we are doing tonight, we, we are going to compare gay rights in Singapore and Taiwan. So, Peggy, yes? why are we doing this? Why are we comparing gay rights? Well, the LGBT issue is a hot topic these days, but there are some misconceptions, so it really helps to address this issue. However, due to the time constraint and also the scope of LGBT is too wide, we can only discuss gay rights for tonight. Oh, I have another question to ask, and I believe our audience, and myself included, are curious as to why we are comparing Singapore and Taiwan. I mean, Singapore and Taiwan are so similar. Both are countries with deep Asian cultures, and both are really developed. So what's the big deal here? Well, although these two countries may seem alike, they're actually very different, perhaps out of your imagination, when it comes to the issue on gay rights. Oh, talking about gay rights. I would like to start off with gay sex. Well, for Singapore, gay sex is banned. According to section, section 377A of the Singapore Penal Code, any male person who in public or private commits or abets the commission of, or procures attempts to procure the commission by any male person or any act of gross indecency with another male person shall be punished with imprisonment for a term that may extend to two years. So all of you, I mean most of you might not be familiar with this and you may not have a clue what this is talking about, but just focus on this sentence. Act of gross indecency with another male person. What this means basically is that it's prohibited. And take a look at this section carefully. There's no mention about women at all. So in other words, sex between women is actually allowed. And I know most of you at this point of time may be thinking, why is this so? Why is only sex between men prohibited? Well, the reason is actually dates back to history. Well, when Singapore was still a British colony back in the old days, the prostitution by transfer types was really prevalent and the British might have implemented this section 377A in order to curb the prostitution acts. Wow, this is definitely an eye-opener. In Taiwan, there's no law that bans sex between men or women, so it's perfectly fine for two guys to do it. I mean, not too openly, of course. And guess what? The Taiwanese cabinet actually drafted a bill to legalize same-sex marriage long back in 2001, even though it was not enacted in the end. And you can see from here, the survey shows that less than 40% of the society was not supportive of gay marriage, but more than 50% of the society is actually supporting it. Don't you find it amazing? Well, I have to confess, this is amazing same-sex marriage. Well, let us recap a little. Singapore does not allow for gay sex, whilst Taiwan allows for gay sex and even has talks on same-sex marriage. Well, I think I can make an additional observation over here. For Singapore, the society is largely conservative with regards to gay rights. And this is also the reason that Section 377A of the Singapore Penal Code remains to this very day. This is maintained so as to reflect the mainstream society and to maintain social order. Yes, Taiwan seems to be more open towards this issue. I mean, there are plenty of discussion among the general public. Even though gays are not accepted by everyone, this issue is still generally well recognized and respected in the society. Oh, I see that Singapore and Taiwan are really different after all, but what makes their attitude so different? Hmm, I think the freedom of expression definitely plays a part here. Oh yes, I totally agree, freedom of expression. So let's start off with freedom of speech. Well, for Singapore, many of you might think that Singapore being a country that is under heavily influenced by the Western culture and one, a society that is multicultural, it should have freedom of speech that is re relatively open and uh, relatively open and abundant. 
But no, no, this is not the case because the government imposed many restrictions as to what uh, people can speak. So, for example, demonstrations are really rare in Singapore and demonstrations can only be held at this place called the Speaker's Corner. Well, Taiwan definitely has a good enough freedom of speech. The government recognized and protects people's right to speak by the Constitution. As you can see from here on the screen, Article 11 states that the people should have freedom of speech, teaching, writing, and publication. And according to Article 14, it states that the people should have freedom of assembly and association. Hence, gays are free to fight for their rights. And besides, demonstration and debates are also very common in Taiwan. For instance, the annual gay pride parade held since 2003. Oh, absolutely interesting. I mean, gay pride parade. Well, but we shouldn't forget the role that the media plays. For Singapore, there are restrictions as to what the media can portray. For example, TV programs that promote or justify homosexuality are banned, and films with homosexual content are cut, screened, and only limited to viewers over 21. Well, I think that freedom of media definitely plays a part here. According to Article 5 of the Fundamental Communication Act, you can see here on the screen, it says that safeguard human dignity, respect minority rights and interests, and promote the balanced development of cultural diversity. This act ensures that the media must be able to protect the minority rights and also promote cultural diversity at the same time. Hence, this may be one of the reasons why there's an increased number of films depicting gays in the Chinese media industry throughout the years. Don't you think that freedom of expression definitely plays a part here? Oh, I have to confess, freedom of expression is really an important factor in shaping a society's perception towards controversial issues like gay rights. The exchange of information and clear your misconceptions certainly play a role. So let's do a small summary. Well, we see that in Singapore, there are restrictions in the speech and media, and therefore this leads to a lack of information exchange. And therefore we see that the Singapore public in general remains conservative with regards to this issue. On the other hand, we see that in Taiwan, there's a great amount of freedom in speech and media, and this facilitates the exchange of information and clearing of misconceptions. And therefore, we see that the Taiwanese public in general is relatively open to the issue of gay rights. Yes, that's right. Don't you think that there has been an interesting night? Yes, I believe all our audience have thoroughly enjoyed our presentation tonight. Well, with that, once again, it is Taida Evening Talk Show. What's up tonight? What's up, Taida? What's up tonight in Taida? I'm Chohan. And I'm Peggy. Signing oh. off.